have to really listen carefully and judge, but still give it a try. Um, 21, the 21 countries, including India, joined hands together on 30th of April 2010, that's this year, to raise the awareness about the plight of amphibians. By amphibians, I mean frogs, toads, and their whole generation, and uh, declare it as Save the Frogs Day. Now, why? Well, it's a simple reason. Because frogs are dying, they're becoming extinct. As part of this second speech, I'd like to focus on that. So, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, my speech is about frogs, these, these slimy, hoppy creatures which all of us have played with when we were kids, and why, what is the necessity for us to care for them. My speech is organized into four parts. The first one being, uh, what is the reason that frogs are dying? Why are they becoming extinct? The so second one, on what is the role of frogs in our ecosystem? The third one would be a quick one where I would like to draw some parallel between Save the Tigers, which is a very famous campaign, and the cause of frogs. And the fourth one would be what we can do about it. So let's move quickly to the first one, and why frogs are dying. The frogs live in damp, marshy areas. All of us know that. We've seen it when we were kids, at least. That's when we saw it more. Now, they have a very permeable skin. That means any kind of toxic material around them, they tend to absorb. And what does this mean? This means that any environmental disturbances, any kind of environmental hazards around us would affect frogs first. Hence, they are dying. Because environment is going for a toss. They are our first indicators. To more elaborate on it, Frogs are actually called as bioindicators. That's the name given to them, bioindicators of the environment. So if you have a population, if you have a place where you see that there are a um, healthy number of uh, frogs, by healthy I mean to say they should have four limbs. I don't know how many of you have seen five-legged uh, frogs or three-legged frogs. At least I have seen one when I was a kid. I'm not, I'm not seeing too many knots, but nevertheless. Five, they get affected by environments, so they tend to have an extra limb or other kind of deformities inside them. So they should be healthy with four limbs and they should also be more in number. And if you see this somewhere, that means the environment in that particular area is good. Hence, frogs need to be safe because they are an alarm signal to us. Now let's go to the second point about what is the role of frogs in our ecosystem. Apart from being bioindicators, they uh, are part of the food chain. So there are things which eat frogs and things which frogs eat. So what, let's go for the first one, the predators, which eat frogs. Now in this we have a lot of animals like snakes, we have sharks, sharks eat a lot of frogs, we have dragonfly, we have sometimes monkeys and dog, uh, dogs, all these people also eat uh, you know, frogs. So if the frogs become less, apart from the environment issue, it basically goes into the full food chain because it affects the food habits of the predators. Now if you go down what frogs eat. Frogs eat uh, worms, they eat insects, and one of the main insects they eat is mal uh, mosquitoes, which cause malaria us. Now, can we actually link the recent spate of malaria and uh, dengue to our frogs? Or, I mean, frogs dying? Well, I actually really googled out to find information about it, but I didn't get anything for the recent thing. Because honestly, there's not much of research going on into it. People have pretty much started this year itself. However, there have been cases where, uh, in, even in Delhi, there have been cases where there have been malaria and people have, one of the possible solutions they have done is get frogs from a little neighboring area and see if they can reduce these mosquitoes, hence the malaria. Hence it actually has a very direct impact to our health. Even dengue, it's just not malaria. Apart from this, one more thing which frogs do is they eat algae. So they are probably the first level of water purification for us. Because more algae, more waterborne diseases, again, problem for us. Now let's go to the third one, where we're drawing a small parallel between a Save the Tigers campaign and the uh, cause of frost. The reason why this is coming abruptly is because I wanted to focus on a very important point here, and that is the point of misplaced focus. I believe it's one of the most wonderful campaign, and it has got all these people of, uh, um, you know, Dhoni and uh, Baijin Bhutia, and at international level you have uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and so many companies like ASL who are actually uh, putting so much of money into it. For what? To save the tigers, very clearly. However, I don't know how many of us know that tigers are actually ecologically redundant. That means if tigers vanish, totally vanish, it doesn't affect our food chain. 
it, it, of course, it's, it's not that I'm not <coughs> saying don't save tigers. We need to see, make sure our future generations see. It. But the amount of energy which is being spent into it, if it's spent on certain <coughs> more damaging and more important things, like the environment, it's, it's, it's great. And we should have something more parallel drawn onto that. And again, if we focus on environment, the first thing we should probably should focus is on their indicators, that's the frogs. Now let's come to the fourth point on what we can do with this. Um, the first thing I would say what we can do about it is spread awareness. Not many people know about it. We have been, at least I know about when I was a kid, I've seen frogs not kill them, but at least diverted their attention so that, you know, uh, they're disturbed. And the, I think every generation of kids does that. So what we need to do is, is to make sure we educate these kids. We, something that all of us can do. We need to educate these kids and tell them they are really important, explain to them, and that definitely will have an impact on the number of frogs there. Apart from that, um, don't eat them, uh, because it might be a little yucky kind of a thing, but frogs are supposed to be, their thighs are supposed to be very interesting for people to eat, so there's jumping chicken in the menu, so try not to do that. And uh, apart from that, uh, there are certain links available on how you can have frog ponds. Now in an apartment era which we are living in, we can't really do that, but still Google it out, have the information, you never know when you can probably use this particular thing. And the biggest thing what we can do to save frogs <coughs> is save environment. Because if we save environment, we have frogs which are being saved, and if we save frogs, environment. There's a very clear and direct link between both of them. Now I'd like to quote the statement by Stephen Jay Gould, who's a very famous biologist and a historian of science. And he says that we cannot win this battle to save the species and the environment around us without forging a very emotional bond between us and the nature. For we would not save, we would not fight to save what we do not love. So I'd like to end this particular thing by saying that it's time we take responsibility, it's time we educate people, it's time we love frogs, and it's high time we save frogs.